Perfect. All right. Well, I think we will um, get started here. So good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us with our webinar, Grow With Us. I'm really excited to have you all here. Uh, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Also, my name is Callum. I'm the, uh, the marketing manager for Combine. Um, if you guys have any um, questions or comments and you want to shout them out, um, obviously you can uh, unmute yourselves here. Not sure how familiar everybody is with Google Meets, um, but all the controls are at the bottom. Um, you can also raise your hand just to give it, let us know, um, and we will get right to you. Um, we also have a chat where you can um, put any questions or comments and all in the bottom right there in that uh, message icon. And then you can also see um, there's that activities button, which has like a triangle, a square, and a circle in the bottom right corner. If you click on that, there is a Q&A. And there you can kind of ask um, questions either anonymously or you can attach your name to it. And I'll be making sure to keep an eye on that list um, and ensure that all of your questions are being answered. Um, uh, before I start, I'm opening the field to any questions right now. Um, and if not, then we can kind of get started. So uh, as I said, my name is Callum, I'm the product marketing manager. Um, uh, on the Combine team today, we have Alain as well, our CEO, Courtney, um, our partnerships manager, as well as JP, who is our customer experience specialist. Um, and so why, um, uh, you know, why are we hosting this webinar? What are we going to be doing today? Essentially, we want to give all of you a better understanding of Combine. So we're going to be walking through the app. Um, JP is going to be doing an awesome demo of it where we'll actually be able to see, you know, step by step all the different features to give you a better idea. Um, I know there's a mixed bag of people on the call here. Some of you um, I'm familiar with. I know you've been on, with Kanban for some time. I'm sure some of you are new and want to get a better idea of it. Um, so we're going to make sure that we have a little bit of everything um, for everyone. Uh, we're going to kind of recap a little bit about what we did in 2023, um, as well as talk about you know how that ties into our overall vision. Um, and then you know at the end we want to get your your thoughts and feedback, right? Are we are we you know what we're doing is it is it right? Um, are there any suggestions that you guys have? Um, and at the end of today, I really want to make sure that you guys walk away with one a better understanding of Combine, um, you know, knowing how to use it as well as kind of our company's philosophy, uh, as well as two um, understanding that you can reach out to us at any point if you have any questions, um, and we'd love to help you out in any way. Um, and so, yeah, without further ado, pass it over to Alain. I'll uh, give you a little bit of a brief overview of what exactly Combine is. Um, oh, but actually, before I do that, I'm just curious um, if anybody or curious to know who here has not tried out Combine. Um, and so you can either shout it out or you can even raise your hand there um, with that, that button at the bottom. Uh, just want to get a better idea of... Awesome. Okay, Neil. Perfect, Alain. Okay. We got a couple here. Perfect. Yeah. Well, then, um, hopefully today should be yeah pretty informative, and I think you'll get a lot out of it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks again for joining us, and Alain, um, take it away. Great. Uh, well, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm uh, very excited to be doing this. Uh, this is the first time we're doing this, so uh, bear with us. We're, we're we tried to take our best guess at how to make this informative and interesting, but very open to kind of take it wherever um, the crowd wants to take us. Uh, we're gonna try not to kind of do too much, present, talk, like that. that's, we just wanna give a bit of highlights and support, but uh, really the end goal is to try to make it as interactive as possible. So if you have questions as we're either showing features or talking about things, or uh, I know some of you submitted some questions ahead of time, so I'll try to kind of cover those as well as I'm as we're going through things. Um, but by all means, the point is for us to kind of have more of a conversation than just uh, us presenting at you. And then as Cal mentioned, we know there's a couple of folks who basically never really been exposed to Combine. So we're going to try to give them a brief overview. But uh, also, obviously, a lot of you have played around and, and tested and used Combine. So we also want to kind of make sure we go a little bit deeper with, with some of you as well. Um, so maybe, Callum, just to start, very simply, for those of you who've never used Combine, like I'd say the simplest way we think about it is uh, helping everyone keep track of every bushel they market. And uh, really, we think about that in, in two big parts. Uh, we, we think about that in terms of accounting for every bushel that you're growing across different crop years and uh, that you're eventually uh, marketing. 
Uh, and uh, part of it is also keeping track for those of you who, who, who do it, uh, track also sort of the on-farm storage and, and sort of delivery logistics. Um, my family farms in Ontario, we're more corn, soybean, and a little bit of wheat, so we don't necessarily track at a very granular level like in Western Canada, but we effectively accommodate for different levels of how detailed you want to be tracking or not. And then, but really this whole idea of keeping track of all those bushels you're marketing, whether you're only tracking them at sort of a marketing perspective or marketing position and contracting view, or you're also keeping track of them of physically where they are and as they move in and out of, of storage into delivery points, uh, keeping track of that too. So that's kind of one key part. And then the other key part is really the, the transaction documents. So obviously contracts, delivery settlements, and our whole philosophy is we wanted to build something centered around farmers and more more often than not farmers are dealing with multiple buyers multiple commodities so they get kind of account statements or account views across different buyers and how do we bring all that together kind of like if you had banking situations and credit card situations across different providers how do you bring all that information together and so that's probably one of the hardest parts for us is how do we do that without making it really painful of having to type everything in. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through, but that's like a key part of, of the other half of Combine. And the whole idea is once you bring all that together, you have a really good understanding of where you are from a marketing perspective. We know a lot of folks do do, do this on a mix of paper, notes, spreadsheets. And our whole view is if you can bring all that together and combine it into one place, you're going to start making much more informed decisions and the more informed the decisions are the more optimal they start becoming so that's kind of a very brief overview of what combine is is it's a grain accounting system purposely built for farmers and the types of things that farmers need to manage when it comes to, to marketing grain. um so just to talk a little bit briefly about a couple of features i want to highlight about 2023 um, you know, this is sort of a, a flash of the areas we focused on. I think one of the key things, and this was based on a lot of requests we had over 2022 and even the early version in 2023 that candidly we, we know wasn't quite good, was really to kind of separate the world of managing a marketing position or what we call sort of the total marketable crop, all the bushels that you're managing in a crop marketing year, thinking about how much grain you either expect to have, actually have once you harvest, and then as you market it, get a sense of how much of that is sold, committed to different buyers and where you're going on sort of different deliveries across different contracts. And we'll talk about it more later, but one of the things there is how do you bring in the bushels that you have to market from other places where that information may already reside. So we launched an integration with FieldView to either pull in planted acres so that you can project how many bushels you're gonna have or post harvest import your harvest totals. We don't wanna stop there. We've got a plan to go after other platforms beyond field view. And we know a lot of producers will rely on grain carts to understand harvest totals. So that for us is all the theme of how many bushels are we dealing with this year as we go through sort of the crop marketing year from pre-planting to planted to harvest to storage post harvest. Storage and deliveries was really to solve for the physical, call it the physical storage and delivery logistics. Again, we have different profiles. Some farmers do not track this, other farmers do. Uh, so we tried to accommodate everyone, but this is a feature that's kind of add on for those who, who need it or want it. And we allow people to now track on farm bins, grain bags, off farm storage balances, and kind of loads coming in and out. So that was a big effort for us to kind of really split the sort of marketing position tracking from sort of physical on-farm logistics and delivery tracking. Um, next uh, key area where we spent some time is really, when you think about contracts load ticket settlements, you can get kind of the apps from, from, from different grain buyers, but if you want to bring it all together, it, it's a bit more challenging, right? And there's still a lot of folks that function on paper, PDF, emails. So one of the things is, we have built document reading technology where as people upload different contracts low ticket settlements we read extract and basically do the typing for you um we have a, a growing amount of farmers who also have opted in with our sort of beta new feature to just forward emails with attachments and then those get ingested and processed into the system and appear into your account 
And the thing we launched in December was for the grain buyers who have enabled that capability, and I would say it's about 30% of the industry is kind of getting there, is we can now download all the transaction documents directly from your grain account if you authenticate into, say, a Parish and Heinbacher or a Delmar Commodities, and if you're south of the border, uh, there's quite a few more. That's an area we're going to keep driving towards because we think that that would be really valuable if the whole industry got there. But obviously, we we added the document reading technology to cover all, all the grain buyers that are are not kind of enabled or ready for that. And I want to make sure for those who are new to Combine, this is not just scan. This is actually read the quantity of bushels, the price of bushels, uh, the dockage. We, we literally pull that information off the document so that you don't have to type it in. Uh, next piece is, this was sort of the last piece. We started with really simple fixed price contracts, um, but then we introduced, again, because folks were asking us, can you introduce basis only contracts, hedge to arrive or futures first, and then targets or, or grade pricing offers. One of the challenges there is obviously these things are a little more, more dynamic. So without direct integration to grain buyers, you know, we're doing our best. This is probably an area we're gonna keep investing on. Um, but that was another kind of key ask this year. So these are kind of the three big areas we worked on this year. And I'll kind of stop there. Happy to react to some questions already if some of you have them. Uh, just off the bat, I know some of you had mentioned, are we going to be activating test weight extraction for load tickets? I think, Josh, you brought this up. Um, yes, this is something that's in the works roughly in the next month that should be in place. Uh, the other component is I'm well aware that our settlement area is not our strongest suite and we're actively working i'm actually parsing through a lot of settlements and trying to understand how to structure them in an organized way into the app um, so that that's an area we're working on on improving how we manage the whole settlement piece and a few of you have brought up uh, and we know we're actually working on it this week and next week is how to better kind of improve the matching of load tickets the contracts and give you more flexibility a lot of folks have also asked, how do I handle when I do a spot sale and I have an overage? Um, so we're working on it. We've heard you loud and clear, and we're we're really trying to improve that part. And I think that's going to then lay a good foundation to improve the settlement piece uh, that we also need, we know needs work. So I'll stop that. I'll let uh, JP present a little bit. But yeah, any questions or thoughts, jump in by all means. Morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm JP. I'm the uh, customer support person who you'll reach out to your point of contact if you have any questions. And I'm going to take over this presentation for a little bit here to kind of dive into what um, what uh, what we've just kind of gone over, but actually in Combine itself. So you can see what this all means um, as we're as we're beginning to explore it here. So uh, as we're kind of looking through Combine, if you guys do have any questions or if anything comes up in terms of if you'd love to see us focus on something, go ahead and drop that in the chat and Cal will make sure I don't go too speedy through certain areas. But what we're going to look at today is essentially a test account that's been set up to, to mimic what an actual farm operation would have and is pretty far along. So if you just signed up to Combine, you'll be greeted with a, a whole kind of load of uh, work that you can do here to get your account up and running. But today, this is going to look like someone who's actually been in here for a while and has actually gone through a couple seasons. So you can get a taste of what the whole system looks like after you've been doing all of your documentation. First, I want to dive into some of the, the marketing stuff that uh, Elaine was just talking about. We go into our marketing section, look back at, uh, well, first, actually, let's look at this year. So what you see here this year is all of our projected harvest uh, that hasn't actually been collected yet because obviously it's it's still uh, January here. But you can see that we've already started aggressively like forward contracting our barley. We've uh, done some of those target price agreements. So some of our other crops are already committed. That's what this yellow line represents. But even though we actually haven't even harvested this amount, we're still getting to see what our marketed position looks like for this year. So you can kind of start planning ahead right away in your, uh, in your year. But what we're gonna do now is jump back to um, 2023 and start looking at one of these marketing profiles in detail. Let's pull up canola. Perfect. Yeah, and JP, just to let you know, we do have a question from Mike come in. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you put Durham seed in um, as Durham seed in a seed bin? And mm -hmm. so I, to clarify here, um, I, I imagine 
are you asking how do you put uh, the germ seed in um, in a seed bin um, and the process um, that takes in combine? I think like you're asking, you know, you want to track seed as opposed to sort of harvest grain and uh, yeah. maybe you're asking, could we set yeah. up a commodity called, you know, Durham seed or, or is, is I think, yeah. Okay. Perfect. I can take this because uh, so Durham seed actually would be something that probably isn't a supported commodity right now. If you wanted to add a crop in general in in combine, uh, you would be on your kind of marketing profile here and simply hit add crop, or you can actually even use the um, add anywhere button that you'll see. Right now I'm on desktop, so it looks a little bit different than if you're on your mobile app, but this plus button you'll see anywhere. If you begin the process by selecting the crop, and let's say it was last year, just so we can say it's harvested, uh, we'll select 2023, and then we'll get automatically fed some crops that we've chosen. We've indicated a combine, this is what we grow, but obviously Durnum seed's not gonna be on here, and so we'll hit other, and I'll begin searching for something like that, right? Right away, we can see here that Durnum is supported, but Durham seed itself isn't a listed commodity here. So if you ever come across this situation, because you have a commodity or a crop that you grow but isn't listed in here, that's when you want to reach out to me right away and let me know that your commodity, your crop isn't supported here, because we can take any suggestions that you have in terms of uh, commodities or crops that should be in combine and get them added on our back end. So this is a perfect example of someone needing to make a feature request, and then we would actually adjust our product to suit your needs. So that's kind of something um, once we have that crop listed in here, Ike, we'd be able to uh, treat it just like any other crop that we would add uh, through Combine. Does that make sense? If there's any follow-up to that, Ike, you can always, yeah, connect with me. Um, I think we'll probably, you probably don't even have to make that request. I'll write it down here so that uh, we can get that commodity added. That's one of the things that I would love to hear more from any of our users is if there's any commodities that aren't supported that you would like to see in there, please just let us know because that's a very easy thing for us to add for, for your ease of use. So this is our total marketing profile for uh, our Canola 2023 crop. And we can kind of see right away where we're standing. We have our kind of nice pie chart here showing how much we've sold. Uh, we've done a fairly good job at filling out some contracts, but we still have more to sell. So we can keep kind of looking forward, uh, maybe at our price performance or at what kind of the market rate is to see what kind of contracts we should be looking at. But as we look at this page, we're actually gonna learn a few other things as well. We're gonna learn, even though we've kind of contracted out a lot of our canola, we actually haven't delivered a ton. We've only delivered about 13 or 14%. So we're still in the process of delivering this crop, and we're gonna have to be entering load tickets for it as those things get delivered. Uh, maybe we work with a driver, and they're sending us images of the tickets, or we're finally getting all the paper contracts at the end. So we still do have some, some paperwork to do for this, but we're well on our way of, of actually selling our crop here. We can also see in regards of where our crop is stored. So, we're only storing actually um, about 1,400 bushels or 14,000 bushels on our farm. The rest are is stored off farm. So perhaps actually we are just missing that documentation and we're much higher above our sold and delivered that's actually there. But this is where you can kind of begin to customize. If we click through to see our storage. You can actually see kind of what the breakdown is and where it's stored on our farm. We're not going to go into too much detail about the storage setup because that is a whole sub feature that we could spend probably a ton of time talking about. But if this is actually something that works for your farm, if you do store a lot of your own commodities and you're having any kind of issues setting this up or are unsure of how to do it, that's the perfect opportunity to reach out to me. Uh, we could set up to a time to talk just like in a Google Meet like this or do the conversation over the phone or, or by text message, whatever works best for you. But allowing this to um, be tracked on your farm if you do have storage allows for, for really understanding where all your crops are and be able to have any traceability you might need with any of your contracts. If we continue down on our, our marketing page here, we are going to see a little bit of information about our price performance. So in price performance, this is where any contracts we have filled will begin to get populated. We can start to see kind of what our, our lowest the contract was, what our max was, and be able to kind of understand where our estimated total of, of income will be. So this can be a pretty exciting way to start seeing a snapshot of things. 
And then we do actually have some integrations too with um, some of the reporting out there in terms of of uh, what the current market price would be on things. So we have integration of something called Farm Bucks, which here in Alberta, where I've set up my, my test store, collects and aggregates bids in the local region. And so bids based on about a 200 kilometer radius from where I've set my farm up, uh, will begin to, to come in here for prices on supported commodities. And so you can get a sense of kind of where things are at in terms of, uh, of the, uh, the actual market price. So yeah, this is kind of like the big marketing overview. This is what our TMC is, that total marketable crop that Elaine was talking about. But let's um, let's start moving on to something that's a little bit funner. Uh, I, I think documentation is actually a kind of an interesting thing because we talked about our document scanner and what all that is, but let's try and see some of it in action. So just like adding a crop before, if I wanted to, I could actually add a document or a contract from anywhere. But let me just show you kind of where I end up going most of the time. I get to go to my file section, and in here I can kind of see what current contracts exist, uh, which ones have been closed, what is open, if it's a target price agreement. I can go in and, and kind of see the details of anything I want here. Uh, and from this place, I also can add a document. So let's add a contract. And if I you know didn't mind data entry, uh, if I, for some reason, enjoyed it, typing numbers at my desk, I could hit add details manually and then go through the different contract types. So this is actually what Alain was showing before about the different contract types we added. When you select them, you can go through and let's just choose a random one here. You can see what information is requested uh, when we're adding a contract. What's important here is just to point out, this is the information that our, our scanner is gonna like extract from any document you take a picture of or upload a file of. So this can kind of be worthwhile to see every once in a while, because as you all know, the uh, the different documents and contracts we get from the various buyers out there are vastly different. And so you can understand how sometimes maybe they're not uploading or extracting all the exact information that you'd expect. But on a regular day, I, I don't actually like data entry. Um, so I'm just going to actually upload a contract and I'll show you what that looks like here. This is just my desktop computer here, and we're gonna enter in, I believe I have, yeah, an example canola contract here. You can see it's a PDF file. I'll save and finish, and that's gonna start processing in our back end. So that's gonna be being read by our, our document processor or scanner, and it's gonna extract the information for us as we're going. Now, what we can actually do, instead of waiting for that to finish, we can actually take a look at one of our low tickets. Because once a ticket is done or once a, a document is done, we're able to review it and see that the information has been captured correctly. So it's a little hard to see. This is our, our load ticket here from a Cargill buyer. Um, and all the information that's on there has now been extracted into here. So we can see the commodity was hard red spring wheat, grade was two. We have a net weight and a gross weight here that are, is being extracted. Uh, net weight is what's going to be applied against your, your profile for the hard red spring wheat. Um, but if you do track any of the other information, like dockage and moisture, all that information can come and be captured through here as well. Yeah, and this is where we're going to be adding test weight, uh, given that that's been a request we've seen a couple times. If there's other things that you really like to capture and that are important for you to track coming off load tickets, let us know. Uh, it's a question for us of just tweaking a bit the document reading technology to pull more fields. Uh, there's a lot of information on a load ticket, but we're trying to focus on what's most relevant. But if, if we're missing some things that you consider particularly important, let us know. Uh, these are the types of things we can iterate and improve on. One tip, if I could, if I could give it, uh, is that if you are receiving files from people and you have time to, to update any of the file names, putting in like the buyer name or even the commodity name into your file ticket along with whatever number system they have can be very helpful because if you're back on that review page, it's really nice to be able to see exactly which one you're clicking on if you've uploaded a bunch of different tickets. So once this is, um, once this scan, once we've verified is correct, we are able to uh, save this and it's going to prompt us to apply it to a contract. So it already pulls up the contracts that we have for hard red spring wheat. We just need to select the right one. Uh, we know it's actually this one here at the top because I set that up earlier. Once I've selected the right contract, I'll hit save and continue. 
looks like we've actually gone a bit over here. We've delivered more to our buyer than the contract was initially out for. That's probably because this is like the second low ticket we've entered and we're actually about 170 uh, bushels over. So this is one of the things that Alain was talking about before, doing spot contracts, splitting up a, a low ticket over multiple contracts. So we're actually going to allocate this overage now. When I hit the allocate overage button, it's going to ask if I would just want to do the other contract that we saw in here, but we know that's not the right contract because we're actually filling this contract at the moment. Um, and we're gonna be able to uh, add the information that we get from the buyer at that time. So we'll hit add new contract. It's gonna start pre-filling in a bunch of the information for us based on what it knows. It knows the commodity. It knows the, the, the weight. Uh, we're gonna enter in the new contract number that they've given us. Uh, we're going to enter in today's date as as when the the kind of spot contract was filled, and then we're going to give the the price that we got uh, from filling this contract. Um, we'll just put in uh, that amount for now, and of course we need also obviously the location of where we delivered it. Once all that's done, we're going to save it, and because we've sent this load ticket, you can see uh, our two tickets here now. Or sorry, our two two contracts the low ticket has been split over. We can verify the information, save and finish it. We're now just gonna need to select where the weight comes from. So on our farm, we have a wheat bag, the quantity isn't set, but we also have one of our bins E4 here that has a stored quantity. We're gonna pretend it all came from E4, select save, and then we just confirm how much came from there. Now you might notice that why is it confirming when we've selected that? That's because we can actually, if we had two bins here, say that 200 bushels came from one and the difference came from the wheat bag or whatever the case may be. For today, we're just gonna pretend it came from one for the sake of this presentation and we'll save and finish. JP, we do have a question from Ryan Griffin. Okay. Uh, Ryan's asking, does it automatically track if the wrong number is pulled into a field, such as the low ticket to improve for future, such as if I enter the correct number manually? Like it, yeah. on this page? I think Ryan's asking in terms of once we kind of have the document reading technology applied and um, Ryan or another, like whichever user would review it and they're changing things because it didn't quite read 100% spot on. I think that's the oh. question. Are we kind of using the correction that they're providing to try to improve? And the answer is yes, we're building basically what would be called a, a feedback loop into the technology in the backside so that um, it, it basically becomes more reliable and also hopefully faster. Uh, Ryan, just for context, early December, we started a really heavy focus on improving that whole part of our technology. Um, we've kind of gotten a lot better on contracts and load tickets to the point we've got kind of near north of 95%, if not 97% kind of reliability. And the speed is like, you know, hopefully down to less than a minute, but we'll see it once, once we kind of really fully put it through. But our aim is to kind of go live with that uh, in kind of four to six weeks as we kind of finish fine tuning it. And then the next big one we're gonna tackle on that one is is the whole settlements part. Cause that to be frank is the one that's been the hardest. Um, but I, I think we're gonna crack it uh, and we're just kind of iterating our way through. But indeed to answer your question, if you do make an edit that gives us a feedback loop on, okay, we obviously missed or the technology missed a field or two. So let's look at what's going on and can we improve the reliability? The point is, the more it processes documents, the more it gets better over time, is, is really what it should be doing. Yeah. So one thing I'm, I'm going to um, showcase here now is that we're actually running into a bit of an issue with this load ticket. As you've noticed, I've been trying to save um, and, and kind of uh, allocate this overage um, and, and save the storage coming out of one of our bins. However, as we've been talking and going back and forth and making a bunch of different edits, what I've probably done here is confuse the system in terms of what is actually being withdrawn and saved from there. So what's gonna end up having to happen here is I'm gonna have to come out and exit 
and kind of start fresh to be able to make sure that it is actually captured correctly. Uh, if you ever do run into an issue like that, while you're processing things, things aren't saving or finish, um, exit out of what it is, flag it with me uh, so that we can investigate to see if there are any other issues because sometimes um, system errors can happen that need to be cleared. And that, that's where your customer support person like myself uh, can come in and, and really help out with that. Uh, one thing I'll point out though, now that we're back on the document inbox uh, page is that our, um, our, our, our document we just uploaded at the beginning of this demo is ready for review. So we could actually take a look at what our, our Condola contract looks like and what was captured from it. So this is another PDF file, just like that load ticket. And you can see here that our system captured all of it. Now, one thing, I'm not gonna save this one. I'm gonna actually just close out of here because I wanna show how this actually works. When these contracts are, are filled uh, and come in, they get applied to your marketing profile over here. So when you actually agree to a contract and something is sold, that's when you get your, your green um, indication here of sold amounts actually starting to fill out. If you're using a, a targeted price agreement contract, that's when things are committed. And that's when you start to get to see the yellow. Now, importing things to the OCR is one way that we can do this. I wanna actually show you guys something else that Alain alluded to earlier as well. And that is in our account integrations uh, and specifically other ways to bring in uh, contracts and documents through without e any data entry as well. And actually, but even before we get into this, I wanna mention something about our email forwarding beta. I know some of the people in this room have started using it and I've encouraged other people to use it, uh, but essentially it takes those same files. We set up a non, like a no reply email address for you uh, that is tied to your combine account and automatically then starts importing those files into your document inbox so that you review them just as you would if you had uploaded them yourself. Now, this can be very valuable for at least a couple of use cases that I found. One, if you deal with buyers who don't really have an advanced system, but do send you contracts uh, via email, you can attach them and then send them off to that email address. Another one is if you're working with any delivery drivers and you don't want to give them full access to your Combine account to upload files themselves. Instead, what you can have them do is simply take that email address, take a picture of the load tickets they're doing as they're dropping them off, and then they can email them to that address. This allows you to kind of keep up on when deliveries are being made and have that information entered right away, rather than waiting for them to finally get back to you uh, or change things. Um, but the other you, integrations, oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, is there, is there a difference between uploading documents on your computer and on your phone? That's a little, no, uh, little softball. Okay. Yeah, yeah, those, it would be the same process. Um, and what, what's convenient about doing it on mobile, and one of the reasons why we have our, our mobile uh, version of everything is because of how easy it is just to take a picture. If you have a physical document, you can take a picture. You can have, if you have multiple load tickets, take an individual picture of each load ticket and kind of upload them um, uh, systematically like that. Um, if you are interested in, in kind of participating in more of those, those that type of beta testing and stuff though, I'm gonna let you guys know there is an option here to select notifications and reach out information about um, research and surveys with combines just under your notification settings. Um, and actually kind of related to that, we do have um, a, another beta that's ongoing with grain buyers. So you can actually uh, connect with grain buyers that are uh, that we have identified and supported here. The process is fairly easy. So I think Parrish and Heimbecker was thrown out there earlier. Say we wanted to connect with them. We'd simply come to this area, hit connect, and start going through the process. We'd be prompted to log in through their back end. These are buyers currently that are uh, working within uh, what's called the Bushel Powered API. And if they are working with that system, we're able to, to be able to... Um, have those documents automatically loaded in and you would just go through and follow the prompts. We have some help documentation on this as well. Um, now, what about, uh, are there any other grain buyers that people work with? Do you wanna see if we have any that are supported? Why don't we search for some? Does anyone wanna list any that they work with in the chat? Yeah, by Tara. All right, by Tara. Ah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, well, not perfect, not yet. Uh, so Viterra isn't a supported buyer just yet. Um, 
the thing about Viterra is that they're probably not within that same API ecosystem that we described earlier. So this would be one where I would encourage you simply to go and hit request buyer, because what you can do when you put Viterra in here and send that information on to us, we're gonna be able to then take that to the buyer and say, hey, look, some of your clients, some of your users are using our app and they would really love to be able to have that information imported. It allows us to advocate for you uh, in that situation and allows us to, to make sure that we're um, growing in the way that um, you guys want to. Uh, we can search for probably one more here, but then I think we'll send along our list of supported buyers um, that we can have. Okay, Richardson Pioneer, I saw that one come up last. There's another one that isn't currently supported. And I know it's been requested. I think Richardson Pioneer is at the top of our list of most requests, but that doesn't mean don't stop requesting it. The more requests we get for it, the more we're able to actually advocate for you and get that buyer integrated. Um, we have a landing page for this um, that um, we'll probably send and be able to, to let you all search for everyone that you have. We do have quite a bit supported right now, uh, but this is an area that we're definitely gonna keep growing in. Yeah, if I can add to that, I mean, this is sort of an ongoing conversation with the broader industry. Uh, people are at different stages of willingness, open-mindedness about approaching this. Uh, we're trying to be extremely respectful with sort of some of the different concerns the buyers have. They've invested in their software systems. Um, they can be sometimes fairly, let's say, um, protective of them. Um, obviously, they want everyone to use their own proprietary app. And we're saying, look, we understand that what we're more interested in is once you have a farmer confirming a transaction with you, um, the documents that come out of that transaction, you know, contract, low ticket settlement, in our view, they equally belong. There's a copy that belongs to the farmer. There's a copy that belongs to the buyer. And we're just trying to make it easier for the farmer to get their copy and kind of organize it the way they want. Um, but it, it it just takes sort of a certain level of demand and critical mass to convince them this is something that they, they need to invest in their IT infrastructure. Um, and so for G3, for example, I've, I've met them a little bit and they're like, look, when you have a high level of demand or you kind of become more and more relevant in the industry, I think this is something we'll consider, but for now we're kind of happy where we are. So worrying this for the long run, we're kind of thinking it may take three, four, five years to kind of get everyone to see where we want to go with this idea of combining all the information in one place from a farmer point of view. Um, but the more people are aware of where we're going, the more people kind of vouch and the more people tell us, look, it'd be great if this buyer or that buyer was on it, uh, the faster we'll get there. In the meantime, that's why we're really investing in improving the, the document scanning technology as a workaround, the email forwarding, because that's the next best thing than typing. Uh, but we know that the real ultimate great vision would be to everything come together in one place, but that will take a little bit of time and that that's where we're building towards. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Ryan has a great question. Uh, also, I appreciate the selfless plug. What the futures podcast, great podcast. <laughs> I think everybody should check it out. Um, Ryan's asking if an alert occurs, if the settlement document is off from the grain contract price. Mm. Uh, not, yeah. not, not the case today, but this is great timing because I'm in the thick of thinking through how we're going to improve the whole settlement piece. One thing that we've added is we kind of give the dockage range that's coming through. Um, so at least you kind of get a sense of if you have an odd load that's kind of off what's typically been the dockage coming in. But these types of alerts are, are kind of really helpful. Um, I have to say I've been spending the last couple of weeks really deciphering how different grain buyers represent kind of the gross weight to net weight settlement between dockage and shrink. And I think I've kind of got a standard way to now process it. And then the other component is obviously the price adjustments, which um, again, people present them in very different ways. Some buyers are very clear about you know, how the price adjustments are coming through depending on things like test weight, protein, falling number. Others are just, here's a number and um, kind of, it, obviously you have to decipher it and understand why, why there's an adjustment on price. But yeah, I, I think if we can get through that, then it'll become a lot easier to start set, setting these types of alerts and hey, there's a deviation here or something doesn't look right. But uh, Ryan, you're absolutely right. Like that's the end goal. The end goal is if we can get the information organized and somewhat structured, it's gonna become a lot easier to say, wait a minute, something doesn't quite look right here. 
But uh, yeah, good, good, good feature idea. I'm gonna take note of this right away uh, as I'm kind of thinking through how we're gonna how how we revamp that feature. Last thing before I pass this off to talk about other uh, partnerships and things like that, I do want to highlight we have our, our climate field view integration here also accessible by going to your account settings and integrations. Um, and this is kind of the same process. You can go through and connect your account uh, and begin deciding what information to import. So if you're a climate field view user, I would very highly recommend you uh, go and check this out and start considering it. Uh, it doesn't cost you any extra money uh, and you can can test it out and see how it goes and that is a great kind of place again to send us your feedback because we we really want to hear from all of our users about what's actually working for them and how to constantly be improving combine for you uh with that i think that's pretty much the demo we can uh, jump in back in here if we have any questions come up but i'll pass it on now perfect thanks jp yeah i'm gonna pass it over to our awesome partnerships manager, uh, Courtney, um, to kind of yeah, explain a little bit about our philosophy when it comes to, um, you know, how do we, which partners we want to connect with, and um, yeah, take it away, Courtney. Perfect. Well, hi everyone. I'm Courtney Bishop. I'm the partnerships manager here at Combine. I've been with the team for about two years now, really focusing on partnering with various egg service providers. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what exactly it is that I do here. <laughs> so I really help work towards the mission with our CEO, Alen, and the rest of our combine team to build that integrated crop marketing management system that's not only purposely built for you farmers, but any of your trusted advisors that you may also collaborate or work with to optimize those grain marketing revenue and risk decisions. So when we talk about uh, collaborate and integrate, there's two pieces here. So I really wanna focus on that first arm, which is integrate. So we really wanna build that integrated crop marketing management system. JP did a great job in the demo. Alens talked about it a couple of times, but we really wanted to focus on bringing farm data and trade data into the Combine app for you farmers. We know a lot of it's siloed off, so we wanted to focus on a couple of different areas. The last couple of years, we've really been focusing on quantity. So especially with that integration with FieldView, bringing in your planted acres and your projected yields, as well as your harvested totals. We're looking at integrations with others in this space, like John Deere Operations Center. We know that's a really big one across you know, Western Canada, as well as Eastern Canada in the state. We're also looking at integrations with green carts such as Agromatics, um, Failtech, Digistars, and others. We really want to help minimize all your typing. And if this data is in an application that we can easily just tap into with our package of APIs, we'd love to do that for you instead of having you sit in that office and spend, you know, 10, 14 hours transcribing all this information back and forth and back and forth. The next area that we know is upcoming is quality. So it's on our radar. Um, it's not as big as of a focus, but it is something we are watching, which is quality. So grade and quality specs. We know it is a huge thing, obviously making sure you meet grade with all your sales, as well as any quality specs are tied. So certain protein allowances, if there's any bleach counts, if you grow peas, moisture allowances, things like that. A lot of the labs are a little bit more archaic, so it might take a while for them to get up and running, but that is something, like I said, that's on our radar. The last piece that you can see on this left-hand side touches on sustainability. So that's something that we have here. It's not quite on our focus just yet, but we know it's something that's being discussed within the industry. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard rumbles across different egg shows that you attended or even just discussions over coffee with your neighbor. So to really talk about this right side, um, we have it broken down into two different little screens. Just to break into more details, Cal, feel free to go ahead. So we wanted to touch on how we bring in that trade document data. So JP touched on it earlier in the demo, but we really start pulling in with our document reading technology, the OCR that we've built in-house, that parses out information. So 
it's our solution for the time being, like Alain said, we really want to try to enable more of these larger companies to just be collaborative within the industry. However, in the meantime, this is our solution. So we're able to read those documents, contracts, low tickets and settlements from Richardson Pioneer, D3, Viterra, maybe it's trial nutrition, maybe it's new co-grain, or maybe it's just a different feedlot that's down the road. And really being able to bring all of this in and get a good picture of what's happening on farm. You're also able to bring that data in and combine it with information from buyers on the bushel platform. So this is the other way that we're consuming all this trade data is with those APIs that I mentioned. So we're working with companies like Bushel that have Greens Connect, Parrish and Heimbecker, Delmar Commodities, Schooler, JGL, and others. We can streamline all your documents. This integration is live, so feel free to test it out. It's available on both our free and paid platforms. We are working on integrations with Bar Chart and Green Discovery. Bar Chart has a larger footprint in the US when Green Discovery has a larger footprint here in Canada. But again, this is really our goal just to help streamline the process. So this is our focus for the next year, um, one of many. But to discuss on the bigger vision, I'm going to hand it back over to our CEO, Alain Gabao. Perfect. And yeah, just want to be conscious of time. I want to leave some time for, uh, for questions and comments. Um, but uh, take it away, Alain. Yeah, maybe just quickly flip back to the previous slide here. I just want to comment. So I know for a lot of you, you're probably going to be more familiar with the name of the grain buyer. Uh, we tend to focus obviously on understanding the grain buyer, but also understanding what's the software that powers that grain buyer, because that's ultimately what we're trying to try combine to. So for those who are not fully familiar with names like Bushel, Bar Chart, Grain Discovery, and then there's a couple others, they tend to kind of power the software systems that grain buyers, originators, merchandisers are using. And gradually they're kind of linking it to the accounting systems with the grain buyers. And then we're trying to link up with them um, to kind of bring all this information in one place. Because what you receive in a PDF or paper is actually stored in an accounting software in the back office of that grain buyer. And there's different providers that are helping pull those things out or us trying to say, if we can go direct, we'll do that as well. But we're trying to kind of navigate this whole hodgepodge of, of different systems and try to bring it together or combine it from a farmer point of view. So this is why we take kind of a very neutral stance. We don't kind of pick favorites. We're just saying, if I were a farmer and I wanted all my information in one place, regardless of what software I'm using inside the farm, whether it's FieldView, JDOps, CNH, Agco, whatever platform you use, if I've got a different grain cart brand, depending on the farm, Combine wants to play neutral and play nice with everyone. So we have to take our time to make everyone comfortable with where we're going, to not step on anyone's toes. But I think people gradually are getting what it is we're trying to do and what it is we're not trying to do also. Um, all right, so let's talk very briefly about, about the, the broader vision, right? It's as was implied in the mission, we were here, our core customer is a farmer, our core user is a farmer. We don't serve grain buyers with our software. We really focus on the farmer, but we try to interact obviously with who the farmers need to work with. And we work also with farmers who work with independent advisors. So we didn't we didn't talk about it too much today, but we are actively uh, in a partnership with one independent grain marketing advisor who is going to start using Combine uh, along with, with a dedicated tool for them to help support. They, they work with about 30 different farmers on grain marketing decision-making, and they have the same kind of information uh, coordination and organization problem that a farmer who is kind of doing their grain marketing on their own has. Uh, Ryan, as an ex-advisor, you'll appreciate obviously sort of this pain point, um, but we, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be kind of coming out with stuff here. And obviously, if you work with an advisor and you're realizing, yeah, I kind of need to share my total bushels, what I've contracted, um, we are very well aware of that kind of collaboration that goes on. And so we're purposely building the software to enable that collaboration. I'd say the other thing is we're very clear, we do not want to compete with advisors. We purely focus on building software. We don't give advice on who to sell, what to do about the market, but we make sure all the information that you need to get good information, good decisions made gets organized. 
So the next slide, I'll just talk a little bit about some of the themes that we have and they're roughly in order for this year. And this is where I would love to hear, yeah, don't do this, focus on that instead, or yeah, this is relevant. So I talked a bit about how we were really working to improve the document extraction uh, capability, the, the information extraction and document reading. We are also, as Courtney alluded to, trying to move beyond other buy the one the buyers we already have, where we can flow information directly into a couple others. We are going to be adding a basic version of cost of production, uh, really to help track what are the gross margins across the different crops you grow uh, on a per bushel basis, on a per crop basis, and hopefully at a farm level. Um, one of the features we get asked a lot, and there was a couple of questions, is how can I share combine across the farm? And or if I have crop shares and basically different partnerships or multi-businesses all in one, combine's not built for that today. Like we, we fully acknowledge it, but this is an area we've identified. We, we will, I think, start working in the second half of this year. So for those of you who brought up splits and crop shares, um, please reach out or we'll reach back out. Uh, because this is an area we want to figure out how to do it. We know it's super important, especially in the U.S., increasingly prevalent um, in partnership setups in Western Canada or crop shares in Ontario. So we know we need to tackle that one. Um, and uh, yeah, for those who are like, I would love to see this better set up. If you reach out to us, like we'll spend some time with you to hear what you would like to see so that we can build it the right way. Um, we're also going to expand beyond field view to bring in hopefully J John Deere and a couple others and grain carts again like pull in those quantities of bushels and then do we bring in things like cash bids do we bring in things like field to bin tracking and then there's a couple other feeds so um I'll kind of stop here and uh would love to hear if there's any reactions in the room uh on like hey, focus on this or go this way, or I think this feature is terrible. Here's how you should improve it. Um, you know, let's, uh, we're all ears. I guess we're perfect. No, no, definitely not. Um, and that's why, yeah, I know some final thoughts here. Um, obviously love to hear your thoughts now. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Yeah, so for cost of production, uh, great question, uh, uh, Simon, so I'm assuming Simon. Um, we, we've kind of been asking, it seems a lot of producers already have a cost per acre calculated somewhere, right? And what we're going to, I think, first do in that initial version is take that number and then convert it into a cost per bushel and a total cost per crop so that we can at least start giving a sense of our different sales or prices on different contracts profitable compared to an average cost per bushel. And then um, also at a total crop level, well, based on either contracted revenue or, hey, if you sold everything you still haven't contracted at today's market price versus your total cost, what would be the overall um, uh, sort of a profitability or not yeah ryan i i i i hear you on the on 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 the the bugs um the split we're working on uh so that that's like actively what we're working on here over the next couple of weeks and and we realize you're not the only one kind of talking about the uh frustration on the load splits um we've heard everyone loud and clear and, and we're really working on it uh what we're going to do is remove a lot of the sort of automatic constraints we've put in and kind of basically say, if you upload, let's say a canola load ticket, here are all the canola contracts that you could match it to. And if you have an overage, you can quickly add a spot sale to say, I didn't have a contract for the balance, I just sold it spot, let me quickly key in the spot information. So that's kind of where we're headed with that one. The other thing that we're doing is working to really speed up the processing because we've seen and we've heard, look, it's nice, but it would be a lot better if it was a lot faster. And so that that's something we're working on. Um, so yeah. Okay, better visibility of current status. Yeah, 
Okay, so uh, one question at town, how to love better visibility of current status of amount of deliveries to contracts. Okay, um, I think on that one, it'd be good to unpack it a little bit more clearly. Uh, so I think if you don't mind, Ryan, if, if you have like 15, 20 minutes to just show us exactly what you mean. I think we have a sense like we, we've heard, but we, if you're if you're okay with that, we may follow up just to make sure we really understand it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Craig, so um, one thing that uh, a lot of folks may not be aware of is we were actually uh, acquired, but we are kept fully arm's length and independent from Bayer Crop Science. So when it comes to what's our long-term capability and sustainability, uh, we actually uh, are in it for the long run because of sort of the way Bayer approaches it is they're like, we broadly want to help farmers with a bunch of useful digital tools. The challenge with building this kind of software is you're right that if you try to focus on short term, it's hard to generate enough revenue on just subscriptions based on the complexity of what we're trying to build. And so Bayer is sort of a patient investor in the long run. They keep us arm's length very much because they understand that this is not the type of thing you want to cross over with an input provider. So we actually run different software, different tooling, we just kind of talk to them uh, once a quarter. And uh, one of the things is we think about how do we create potentially some interesting interactions between field view and combine, but we are not restricted to work only with field view. We are working with all the competitors of Bayer and field view in that world. The broader view from Bayer was if we can broadly help farmers do better on the grain marketing side, we also generally do better. So they have this sort of grow the pie philosophy. I negotiated this for 13 months with them because I was like, I need the capital to build this out, but I cannot do it. Um, we need to be very thoughtful about how we set it up. And one of the things that may happen over time is there was also the possibility that we may then, once we built the core foundation, allow ourselves to, to spin off out again um, because of this view of you need the patience to build it out, but once it's built, it's more valuable at its full independence. So this is a bit sort of the balanced world we, we try to navigate overall. Uh, but Craig, happy to answer any questions on that front um, if, uh, if, if I haven't kind of hit it clearly enough or feel free to follow up with me one on one if, 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 if you want to hear more a little bit about the whole setup and how we operate. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say that we've kind of come to an end. Uh, the time is up, but we are, our team is happy to stick around and answer any other questions um, that anybody has. Uh, have our contact information down here. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us at any point, um, whether you got questions about the app, you're running into any issues, JP is happy to help you out um, and can contact any of us as well. Um, I'll flip back to the uh, vision slide just to keep you um, give you some thoughts that you can ask questions about. And yeah, as I said, we're happy to, to stick around. Um, yeah, Lori, I think great question. Uh, I'd love to hear other producers think about it in the room. So the reason we consider it committed from our perspective is, so if you contrast it to a TPA or, 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 or a grain price offer, like that's kind of a pre-commitment in the sense that you may not want to count those bushels as truly available to market, but you actually don't have a grain contract yet right it, it can fall back if it doesn't trigger then that grain is still available to sell if it triggers it converts into a contract the way i think about a basis contract is you have a legal obligation to deliver that grain um it's just a question of the pricing is not finalized but but my read of a basis contract is you have to deliver that volume so that grain is committed there, there's no way you or you have to buy your way out of it if you're no longer going to commit it so it's effectively legally contract that is a volume you need to sell. It's just not fully priced yet, is how I view it. Uh, so to, okay, yeah, if there's better verbiage, we're always open to what is the more natural uh, way to think about it. So um, yeah, Laurie, like if, if you would, how you would label it would be curious to say, you, you would consider it committed but not necessarily sold so kind of committed unpriced or something like that
Okay, no point noted. We can think about the verbiage on that one. Keep it simple and let everyone interpret. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? And again, you know, something that we can think about after this webinar as well. Um, but we'd love to hear, you know, exactly just how we're doing, um, whether or not this webinar was useful to you. Um, if this is something that we should do regularly every couple of months or so. Um, I think we had a good time <laughs> putting it on, that's for sure. I think it's been great um, getting these questions in as well. So um, I know it's something we'd be interested in. Um, so definitely let us know. And yeah, I, essentially, we can kind of turn it back on you and, and um, let you know that your feedback really is invaluable. I think we've learned a lot today as well. Um, and if this is a vision um, uh, and a tool that you, you know, believe in and you use, um, it would mean a lot to us as well if you, um, you know, can help advocate for it um, and help others understand our vision um, as well. It's, it's, you know, word of mouth, especially in the agriculture industry, is is gold, right? And um, I think to grow this, we need just as much of your help um, as well. So, yeah. absolutely, Josh. I'll give it a little bit longer for anybody. Thanks, Clint. Definitely appreciate that. Yeah, I, I would say one thing I really appreciate is, you know, I, I think a lot of the folks on this call, the folks that have been using the app have been very patient with some of the things I know we didn't have right. You know, we've been working through some bugs. We know it's not perfect. Um, we took the time also at the beginning of this year where we said we are not going to be adding new features. We're really going to kind of polish, optimize, tune a lot of the things we already have. Um, and it's it's just been, you know, very appreciative of the fact that people are like, we can see you're trying, you're kind of reacting to the feedback. We try to take our time and get it done. But um, it's uh, it's getting there bit by bit, and, and hopefully with the foundation we laid out last year, the kind of tuning and cleanup we're doing right now, uh, we'll be able to start really picking things up as, as we move into sort of Q2, Q3 this year and, and ha start having something that I think is, is getting more and more powerful and will be quite powerful for the, the 2024 uh, harvest and, and marketing year. So, uh, and I would say, like, I... I'm an open invitation. Any of you, there's my email. Uh, if you email me, you get my cell phone. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I learn a ton in terms of comparing farming in my neck of the woods. Like we're a mixed dairy cash crop. Uh, compare a little bit in contrast, different crop mixes, different parts of the region, and kind of try to avoid making assumptions about, well, how we do things and how we manage our crop marketing. Uh, I've come to realize doesn't apply to every region, every farmer. Uh, in fact, doesn't apply 90% of the time. So uh, anything you throw at me is is usually super helpful. It helps me think and kind of guide a bit the team about, okay, we need to account for this, we need to account for that. Um, but you know, coming from the farming space, I understand more quickly what folks are talking about when when they describe things to me. So I try my best to translate that into how do we get the software to work? Um, and I know what it is. When it's not working, it's frustrating. I get it. So we're, we're working on being better on that front. Perfect. Awesome. I think, yeah, yeah. I think we'll wrap it up there. And I'll, I'll be following up with an email uh, with the recording, with the PowerPoints. Um, so you guys have all this info as well. Um, and again, keep saying it but definitely please reach out if you have any questions and we can, can continue the conversation um from there as well so big thanks everyone as uh len said earlier this is our first time doing it had a lot of fun um and hopefully uh we'll be doing it again all right